So this video is a bit of a follow-up. Almost two months ago, I made a pretty emotional video um, the morning after the professional IKEA installers had finished installing our $5,000 worth of office furniture. And they did, to call it amateur is too generous because I'm an amateur, I'm not a professional, but I have never done such a job uh, installing IKEA furniture. They destroyed it. They destroyed the furniture, it's the only, only way to say it. Um, and in that video, I went through all of the, the things they did wrong. And if you're about to put some money down on a best system, it would actually be worth watching because you, know, you can see every mistake that you could possibly make and, uh, and you would avoid it for yourself. Now it's two months later and the office is done, uh, though we're still fighting with you for some money back. And I promised to make a follow-up video after I recorded the first one. Uh, so that's what this video is. Uh, all of the different steps over the past two months of uh, dealing with the bad install. So where did we leave off? Uh, we had an install appointment back in early September on a Friday and uh, the guys come really, really late in the day. They don't have all the tools they need uh, so they don't finish. So they're gonna come back on Monday. Monday, they're completely no show, no call, nothing. But we call you know, the, the their company and they say, okay, they're gonna come first thing Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday at noon, they show up, to finish the job, but a bag of, um, of screws for one of the pieces is missing. Like it was in the box, which of course these guys lost it. It's gonna come back later that all the things that they, they lost and threw out, but um, some foreshadowing. But uh, yeah, so if some, if like, if you get an IKEA piece of furniture and screws are missing, there's two options. They send you that piece uh, from Sweden and it takes several weeks or your local IKEA store gives you a new unit. So that's what we're gonna do. The local IKEA store is gonna give us a replacement unit, but um, it's gonna take some time for that new delivery, that new order, basically. And so that was where I left off on the last video. They had finished my half, done like a horrible job, and but uh, my partner's half of the office on that side, um, they were able to finish because they had lost some of the pieces. But of course, like they did a really, really bad job. Like things are scratched, things are just wrong. Like shelf over there literally just had like a drill like through it just like through this frame of the shelf um so some calls were made from keto to the contracting company and uh they're gonna have like their best guy i think maybe the owner of the subcontracting company they come and evaluate and figure out what to fix so that guy comes and this is again this is after my last video and it, uh he completely agrees that like it's really really bad and like uh half of it more than half of it is gonna just have to be completely replaced so that was a relief because, you know, what was really stressful about it was like that it wasn't like, oh, this one drawer is just completely broken. It was like, like half the drawer front like scratches, all these things are misaligned, like so many small things. I wasn't sure like if anything would get done about it. Uh, but he like completely agrees, like this is unacceptable. This is not a professional job, not even an amateur job. Like, and um, he makes a big list of everything that's gonna have to be replaced. Um, I don't want to repeat myself in the first video, but like the the top cabinets, the handles that we put in so low that they scratch the frame. So all the top frames have to be replaced. The handles are in just like the wrong spot. Like they shouldn't be where they are. That's why they get scratched in the frames. So we need all new door fronts because the handles, like when you install them, you drill the holes for the handles. And um, yeah, the piece that they just throw before they have to replace, like a bunch of stuff like that. He makes a long list, new order is gonna happen. And he is going to personally be here to make sure it all gets fixed. And uh, we have a new appointment where he's going to bring all the new pieces and come install everything again. We have to wait some time. Uh, and uh, in between these two things, I did have my uh, both my daughter's birthday parties. So, you know, this is a whole room in our house. We just live in an apartment. But, like, we, the room has to be pretty much empty for the guys to work in. So, like, we're emptying out the room into the living room. And then before the birthday party, you don't want, like, even your normal stuff in the living room when you're having, like, a bunch of four year olds over for a birthday party. And then also eight year olds, because both my girls have birthday parties. And so everything was just kind of moving in and out of this room a couple different times. Um, yeah, because you know, we get these appointments now. That's what it is, each of them is weeks apart. So the day finally comes for this guy, this expert, possibly the owner of the company, to like come with all the stuff, fix everything. And we haven't heard from them. We're calling the company, we're leaving messages like, you know, we're not hearing from them. And finally we get through and he's on vacation. Not like sick that day, not like they lost the appointment, like 
this guy that said he was coming personally made this appointment when he was on vacation. So we have a new appointment with this other guy that they get and they sort of like, like a really good guy and the best people. So that day finally comes. Um, we're waiting for him to come. Uh, because we've had so many appointments now where we live, we have to tell the building people to like take down the there's like little blockers who come right from the building. And um, the building hasn't done it this time. Like we've called so many times for all these different appointments, this time they didn't do it. Uh, so we call them to be like, hey, just so you know, you're gonna have to park in the parking lot and bring things over. You're not gonna be able to get right in front of the door. And uh, the guy's like, no problem, just in my car. And I'm like, that's really weird because like, all the whole room worth of furniture, half of it's being replaced, and um, how did it just fit in your regular car? So he thought that he had to get just the like cabinet fronts, with, like, like just that, and everything else was already here, already been delivered. So they had like they worked for the delivery company, but there was this like delivery that like they thought happened that didn't actually happen. So he comes here and like yeah, none of the things are there, so he can't actually view anything. Uh, also, the second person that was with him, and this is their best top team, pretty sure he was a teenager. Like, I know I'm getting older and young people just can look really young sometimes, but like the second man, I was like, they're a team of two, I would be really surprised if he was older than 20 years old. Um, but yeah, he also is very disappointed in the work, thinks it's like a really terrible job, uh, is really shares some frustration about the lack of coordination with this company that like he was told all the pieces were here and they're not so there's nothing he can do and he, i was somewhat impressed by this guy because like he's like on the phone with his boss and like while he's talking he's like realigning the drawers like real quick he just like knows how to like which things to change to like make a drawer straight you know and like that's impressive okay you can just do that <laughs> like okay so i'm thinking so i'm like okay maybe this this looks good so he leaves because there's nothing he can do and um, we have to arrange for that delivery that they thought had already happened, the, the majority of the pieces. And this was a little bit of tricky because it's a replacement delivery, so we're not like buying them again. But we had to kind of fight that, you know, whatever random delivery guy comes and brings this stuff, between now and when the, the good guy can come back again, uh, you can't take these off. Cause like, this is something I was really, really nervous about. Um, Cause like there was glue all over the floor when like the first guys, the really terrible ones, had left. So like, I was really nervous that we were only getting a placement of some of the pieces. I was really nervous that some of them, the ones that were still good, the ones that we were supposed to be keeping, were going to be destroyed when they got disassembled. And then what happens next? Like, do they just pretend it didn't happen? Do we have to wait another week or two for them to get that other piece replaced? Like. So we had to fight a bit that you know, so replacement order, you're not taking away the bad stuff until this really good guy, he's going to do this assembly. Um, so that was a couple extra phone calls, more waiting time with Ikea, but uh, we did get that so that the new delivery came, but they didn't take anything away until like a really good guy could come and disassemble everything. But all of that happens, all of that, you know, goes through as planned, I guess, as you could say, as planned at this point. And, um, he fixes everything and now the installation job is considered done and, and our open tickets for the key at this point are just to try to get back some of our money. So uh, how did they do, you might ask? Uh, after all of this time, after two months of not having our home office, after moving things in and out of the room so many times, after a bazillion hours uh, talking with Ikea, after the $800 spent for delivery and installation, which was supposed to save us stress, and of course the, like, the $5,000 for the furniture itself, uh, yeah, how, how did it all turn out? So the first thing that really had to be fixed was the, the top frames. The handles were too low, so they banged against the frame. So the frames had really fast scratches, they had to be replaced, and so did the doors, because the handles were just in the wrong spot. Uh, the first guy, I think maybe the owner guy who was on vacation, same thing, like this is just the wrong spot. And uh, the second guy, uh, the one who actually did the job, said the same thing, like the handles were just installed incorrectly, that's the wrong spot. So they were supposed to you know, replace both the frame and the door, and they ended up just replacing the frame, not the door. And the few that were scratched and had to be replaced, they put the handle in the same wrong spot. The guy that actually did the work, uh, he's, what, what he said to my partner, I was in here, was that, not from German, 
was that he was so sure that was where we wanted it that he assumed the first guy did a really terrible job must have asked us where we wanted the handles and we said we wanted it in that spot that scratches the frame and is one of the main reasons cited for having to replace it all so uh yeah so the doors stayed wrong um and really not too low both because it breaks the frame and because it just doesn't quite look right it just looks too low um so and instead they installed like a rubber stopper so it wouldn't keep hitting the frame and there's two things wrong with this um the first one is the holes um the guys that first installation there were some holes in the back of, of the of the of the door they used one of those as like a guide hole for building in the handles and the guy that did the final fix immediately like found a little plastic piece and goes this is what goes there like he knew right away this hole has a purpose it's for this little stopper um you know and that goes there like that's supposed to go there and kind of make it land a little softer so that's the first reason like it's just like it's wrong to like leave the handles this low um the second is like with this like i showed my first video with the screw there the door has that screw so the door is just like a little bit open and has like that little bit of screw there and so um it doesn't hit the frame now because they put a rubber stopper next to it you know of course they're all like a little different they're not even they're not centered but the rubber stopper is there and i can throw them away put new ones in i guess that are centered but um yeah so there's like a little rubber stopper that is keeping the screw from hitting the frame so that means the door is just a little bit open because again it's not supposed to be this way so what he did to compensate for this was you know the the hinges in IKEA they're made to be really adjustable so you can kind of make them really straight um is he put it in the frontmost position so instead of like the hinge side of the door being flush to the frame and the front having this little gap from the screw and the stopper um he pushed forward so there's an even gap the whole way at least in the middle two it's even on the two edges i think he just kind of forgot to do it and they are still kind of flush at the hinge end and uh, with the gap at the other end okay and the next thing that wasn't quite done right even the second time around uh, I had mentioned that the first install guy did a really bad job, um, lost the bag of screws, and that it wasn't the only thing they threw away. Uh, there was lots of extra pieces, and some of them were not extra pieces, some of them we really did need, but they threw away. And when the second team came and, and redid it all, you know, eventually, two months later, um, they didn't have those pieces, and they just did it without those pieces and left it to us to special order them and install those things. So for example, like little square covers um, that cover some of these uh, bolts and holes and you can't see here as well, I'll show. And um, there's a little plastic cover. First guy's supposed to just throw them all away. So uh, we had to like look up the piece, special order, have it delivered and snap them on ourselves. Uh, like yeah, not such a big deal to snap them on, but uh, a pain to have to do all that. And a couple of little things like that too. And sort of related, even the second team, the, the good ones, the professionals, the best they have, uh, had a lot of extra pieces at the end. And um, some of them, like, we could see where they are. The drawer fronts and the cabinets can all be either. So um, they have a space for attaching either a hinge, you can have it a door, or for attaching like uh, the sliders for it to be a drawer. And the door hinges actually have them on both sides. So you can have the door open this way or open this way. Um, and there's like a plastic cover on top of those holes because obviously, you know, one side is not going to be used. And, uh, but if you have it as a drawer, they have another different special piece. You can take off the cover uh, for that hole that you'd use as a door and put in like another one that's like smaller so that the door frame is flush against the door front. Yeah, and this guy just skipped that step. So there's this little gap between the, the square drawer and the door front. And finally, one of the gaps they weren't able to fix. Let me see if I can change the camera angle. Okay, so I have this little nook here where my desk is. Um, he told the design, you know, there's column overhead and then, uh, you know, two more full columns on, on this side here. And um, so the way these were all assembled is there is, you know, two uh, pieces on the ground and then this row across here that are all wall mounted. So the ones across the top are wall mounted and of course they are flush. I can't see, the fact that you can't see it is a good thing. They're like flush uh, to the wall there. Now, however, on the bottom, it uh, there's some wall trim. So the bottom of the frame, of the, of the base piece 
year. Um, it's like this far away from the wall, from the little bit of wall trim. So if the base is this far away from the wall and the top is against the wall to be even with the wall mount part, that means that like the, the base part is a little like this, right? We, yeah, it just has to be. So if you see <laughs> that little bit of gap there, um, it, in person it's, 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 um, it's enough. It kind of makes me angry when I look at it. So of course, if you know this part here is away from the wall at the bottom and it's flush against the wall at the top, uh, you know if, the, if it's like this against the leaning against the wall, of course the top is going to have that little uh, triangle up there as a gap. They said that this is just unavoidable, um, you know, because of all of those things. Now I'm not a carpenter. I'm not a professional IT installer person. But, um, but let's, let's look at the wall trim. So here's the bottom, forgive my you know, shaky handheld camera. So you can see this wall trim here. So the leg has to be this far away from the wall and that there is, you know, a, a decent gap in here. Um, that, you know, I can stick a finger in here up to like my first level. The gap is pretty good here, but of course at the top, you know, it's flush against the wall to be even with that top piece. So is this completely unavoidable? Is there, nothing that could have been done to avoid this or like you know maybe like that leg could have been attached a little bit farther forward and then it could have been flush against the wall the whole way maybe am i crazy is that is that not how that works i mean again i'm not a carpenter here but um yeah i think uh i think that leg could have been attached like an inch farther forward closer to the front and then um yeah then there wouldn't be uh yeah those big gaps these triangle gaps uh, that on both sides. Yeah, and of course, even though they fix the big things like the, the scratch frames and the frame that had a hole in it and any of the fronts that had really, really huge scratches in it, like I said, the little things, you know, there's still little things that are not perfect, not as good as I think I would have done uh, if, if I had been here doing the install. And of course, the floors are still scratched to hell because there's nothing that can be done about that. And um, yeah, and I'll show what we're going to end up getting stuck paying for that when we eventually move out because it's a rental and I think we're supposed to take it pretty seriously. So lesson learned, point of all of this that I hope maybe one person I can help is never, ever, 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 ever hire Ikea to do the install. It's not Ikea's people who do the install. They just give the contract out and apparently there is zero vetting of these contractors. So if you want help, if you want to not do it yourself or you want to do it yourself, um, hire the contractor yourself so you can vet them and make sure you get someone good. So what I would strongly recommend is if you're ever doing a really big IKEA install is to find like a well-reviewed handyman uh, or a friend who you really, really trust and to do it with you, with emphasis on the with you. Like be involved, be holding the book, always know exactly what step of the process you're on. Like be a little annoyed about it. Of course, be respectful because the handyman and your friend is like the expert and like always respect expertise. But yeah, expertise can be kind of the enemy when it comes to assembling IKEA furniture because it's not meant like it's just meant for everyday people to be able to do it. And it's done really smart with lots of little tiny details that if you're not following along the book, you'll just miss them. I actually have a story about this. Me and my boyfriend's friend were assembling the uh, uh, wardrobe with the Italian word uh, for my daughter's room. We have three of the biggest size tax frames. So it's gonna be like six door Armani in the end. So we assemble the first frame, super great. And then we start the second one. And I tell him like, this is the tricky part because we just did this and we think we know how it goes and we're gonna stop looking at the book and we're gonna make a mistake. And he's like, yeah, of course. So I'm like, so keep following the book. Like, this is this is when people make mistakes doing IKEA furniture. And um, he says, yeah, of course, of course. And then, he is um, hammering in one of these pieces. If you've done a key furniture, you'll know it, where it's round and there's like teeth. So you basically hammer it into a piece of, um, of wood and then it makes like a drill hole. And you know he's of course gone ahead, stopped following the book, and he hammered it into the wrong spot. Now, of course, this is a friend doing a favor, so I'm not like angry if anything. I think it's funny, but I just warned him to be careful going ahead because we're going to make a mistake and he does it. And in the end, it's like, you know, a hidden spot behind the drawer, like you don't see the mistake. But again, we're not professionals. I wasn't paying him $800 to do this. He was doing it as a favor. But I think that is the perfect call when it comes to assembling a furniture. You want one person that 
no set of drill and balls, knows how to use some tools, um, you know, knows what to do if trim gets in the way and makes something kind of unexpected. And one person who looks at that freaking book and follows the instructions. So this office is done, um, you know, according to the job now. This was supposed to be like a multi-year dream come true. And instead it kind of makes me a little angry. Like, especially like if I'm sitting here at my desk and I can see that little triangle corner. Um, I tell myself I need to let it go, that like it's not healthy to hold on to anger. But some of that actually just makes me more angry. Like it's not just that it's imperfect, it's actually like hurting me by making me angry and unhealthy. But the install is done. We are done fighting with the incomprehensibly unprofessional and unorganized contracting company that IKEA gave our contract to. And now we are just fighting with uh, IKEA's support to get back some money. And uh, surprise, huge variance in levels of competence uh, when you call up the IKEA people. Of course, every time you call, you're dealing with a new person. Sometimes they can pull up the existing ticket info, sometimes they can't, so I have a new ticket. So that is a bit of a mess in itself, and I hope that gets settled uh, in less than two months' time. But yeah, uh, conclusion, lesson learned, never, ever, ever hire IKEA to do install. It will cost you thousands of dollars and months of your life. If you're watching this video because you are uh, planning a room or a portion of a room with an IKEA system, uh, my next video is actually going to be all about the best of systems specifically. Uh, I've done a lot of IKEA furniture, a lot of packs. Um, it's my first time to invest in, and I did learn a lot about the system that if I had known in the beginning, early planning stages, I would have made a few different choices. No more ranting about the, uh, the install job, just really useful information about IKEA Vesta. Uh, so if you were interested in that, uh, subscribe for when it's ready. Uh, or if you're watching this in the future, it might already be ready, and in which case, the link should be uh, on my channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao.